So I now, um, uh, we are coming to the core session where you will meet the faculty and the staff of the ISU and uh, you will receive a detailed description of ISU courses and programs. You will learn about the alumni community and networks and also the ISU entrepreneurial activities, which many uh, seem to be interested in when I'm looking at the chat. Many of the uh, chat questions will be answered automatically by the talks and then probably in the breakout session, which we could not cover right now. So I just want to introduce very briefly uh, also the speaker of this session. Uh, the first one, um, first speaker will be Nazim Bove, who is the head of admissions and alumni affairs. And he will start and give you an overview presentation um, uh, about uh, all the programs and courses. He will be uh, followed by Chris Welsh. Uh, which is the di who is the director of the master program and the head of the space payload laboratory and he will introduce the master of space studies program and i i, I just want to say there were some questions about experimental work at isu and about space exploration in the chat so he will probably be able to cover that and then uh, there is gokduk uh, karajigliogu uh, the director of the Space Studies Program and the Interactive Space Program, ISP. So uh, Gokduk will um, introduce uh, the Space Studies Program, the Southern Hemisphere Program, which actually runs right now also in Australia, and the Interactive Space Program. And as uh, the president of the ISU just mentioned before, this Interactive Space Program was held uh, for the first time during the COVID pandemic in 2020 and had this really very successful program of 85 students from 27 countries ex and explore together with the experts how space technologies can address, uh, address a global pandemic and how important space technologies are in addressing uh, you know uh, such um, uh, a situation on on earth and uh, finally there will be Geraldine Moser who will uh, is the head of the business development unit at ISU and she will introduce the executive space courses to you so I give now the word uh, to Nassim Thank you very much, Pascal. Um, let me share my screen. Okay. I will give uh, now this short presentation of uh, ISU programs, a history of ISU and the uh, main programs of ISU. Uh, I will speak a bit about the alumni of ISU and I will conclude with um, how to apply to the ISU programs. So ISU was founded in 1987 by these three young visionaries and uh, we are happy to have Bob Richards with us uh, today. A few ISU milestones. Uh, the first SSP took place in 88 at MIT. This was mentioned. Uh, it is in 94 that ISU relocated to Strasbourg where our headquarters are now based. And we had our first master in space studies in 95. Uh, in 2002, our official uh, opening of the new central building open was, uh, was made. Uh, first executive space course took place in Strasbourg in 2003. Since 2004, we have been officially accredited by the French Ministry of Education. Uh, in 2011, we had our first uh, Southern Hemisphere uh, program in Australia. I add that in 2015, the first MSS year B uh, research thesis was offered. The first commercial space program, CSP, was held in Florida in 2019. 2019 was also the year when we launched our ISU incubator and booster. And finally, as mentioned, the first interactive space program was offered online in 2020. You heard already a lot about the three eyes, uh, which I will not uh, go to more in, uh, in detail right now, but I would like to really remind everybody that uh, ISU is really a competitive edge to begin a career in a space related field and more than 80% of ISU alums work in the space sector today. And uh, yeah, the network is essential and ISU is all about uh, networking. ISU academic programs. So the Master of Space Studies uh, is a one year program always held at the ISU Central Campus in, uh, in Strasbourg. And there is an optional second year for a research thesis. The Space Studies program, SSP, is a two month program held every summer in a different country uh, and also online in 2021 uh, with a six week version. We'll hear more about this soon. The Southern Hemisphere program was created because our friends from the Southern Hemisphere um, 
wanted to have a program during their summer. So now we have this five week program in Australia. It's happening at the moment, exceptionally online. Usually it's always in Adelaide, Australia. The commercial space program is a six weeks program held in Florida, USA in collaboration with our friends from the Florida Institute of Technology. And the executive space course is a one week program held three times per year in Strasbourg, France, Australia, in Canberra and the USA in Seattle. On this map, you can see all the ISU SSP host sites from 1988 to 2021. As you can see, we have been a few, several times in North America, uh, many times in Europe, of course, and a few times in Asia, and a couple of times in the Southern Hemisphere, but now we have our ded dedicated program over there. For the upcoming SSP 2021, you can see it in red uh, on the top, on top right. It will happen simultaneously in Granada, Spain, and in Strasbourg, France for the first time. And it will also be uh, like offered online for a shorter time for those who cannot make it on site. The latest space studies program, which happened on site, was SSP 19. And I'll give just a few statistics about it. Uh, we had about 127 participants. Uh, from, from 36 countries, so that was really huge. And uh, people came from already all over the world, as you can see here, as every year. In terms of background, about half of the, the, the people who attend the program are engineers, and the other half come from all the other backgrounds. The Southern Hemisphere program, as I mentioned, is taking place right now at the moment online, and we, we plan to resume on site for the next session in 2022. A few stats about uh, the MSS. Uh, in a class, you can count between 40 and 45 students so during a typical year, covering, again, all the, the main uh, space countries. Um, and in terms of background, it's quite similar. About half of uh, the students are engineers, and then the rest come from all the other backgrounds. We have many team projects you can do during the, the master, but I will let uh, the program director, Chris Welsh, uh, comment comments soon uh, more in more details about the MSS. If you come to our uh, headquarters in uh, Strasbourg, France, we have uh, for radio astronomy an X band antenna. We have a concurrent design facility, which allows us to design very efficiently uh, all kinds of spacecraft. We have a tracking and ground station. Like this, we can uh, track the nanosatellites, uh, for example, which are launched to space by some of our students. And we have a real Russian space capsule, uh, which has been uh, we've had for a, a few years, and our students can use it for educational purposes. Finally, we have a self-deployable habitat for extreme environments. It's used to uh, simulate uh, moon or future moon and Mars missions. So it's for analog missions, basically. Uh, in terms of uh, research projects in space uh, from our students, we have uh, three which were launched to the ISS, uh, and I'd like to mention them. Uh, they are called the Hydra 1, 2, and 3 experiments, and uh, the latest one, Hydra 3, is planned, scheduled to return on Earth in January 2022. In terms of uh, entrepreneurship, which was uh, mentioned uh, many times during these presentations, we have an ISU incubator and booster, and our alumni who wants to start their own uh, space startup can uh, use the facilities that we offer them at ISU and we help them finding the first rounds of funding. The ISU alumni community uh, is now from all over the world and we have reached the, like, the symbolic threshold of 5,000 alumni from over 110 countries. So this, is, uh, this shows the strength of the ISU network. A few examples now of ISU alumni. Uh, Jessica Mayer uh, is, uh, is uh, the astronaut which was recently on the ISS and we are extremely proud of her. Um, but we have many other alumni working uh, in all the, all the fields of the space sector. We have many alumni working for NASA, of course, but also for Boeing, Lockheed, and also in all the new space companies. We have alumni in high position at SpaceX, at Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin. Uh, we have uh, also some space startups, uh, very significant ones like Planet. Uh, the the co-founder is one an ICU alum, for example. The same thing in Europe. We have many alums, of course, working at ESA, like Elodie, uh, whom you heard, we heard from a moment ago, uh, at the French Space Agency, basically in all the European space agencies, also in the space uh, European industry, of course, with, of course, Airbus and so many other companies. Uh, we can also mention some startups like Spire. 
We also, of course, have the alumni in all the main Asian uh, agencies, like, uh, for example, uh, in China, in Japan, at uh, ISRO in India, in the Middle East, um, in Africa. Of course, we heard from Val, but uh, it's also the, true, the same is true also in Nigeria, for example. We have many alums working in key positions in companies or in organizations in Oceania uh, and in Latin America. So to summarize, uh, you can see all this logo on this slide. These are just a few. Our alumni are now everywhere in the space sector in uh, increasingly important positions. We are present, of course, on all the social media. So if you want to learn more about us, you can always go on uh, Facebook, on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, etc. A word on our chancellors. The first one was uh, Arthur C. Clarke. Um, which I don't need to present to any uh, like space fan, of course. Jean-Jacques Dordain, who was uh, the ex-DG of ESA at the time. Buzz Aldrin, uh, we were lucky enough to have him for several years as uh, our chancellor. And now, of course, uh, it's Pascal Lerenfraud, who is our moderator today. Finally, I'd like to uh, mention how to apply to ISU. Uh, you can see here the fees the full fees for the programs, but please keep in mind that we have scholarships available for applicants from all countries. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any question that you might have in a breakout room in a moment about funding. In terms of applications, you have all the deadlines here. Uh, so then for SSP, for example, please apply before 31st March if you want to join the next one and before 15 March if you want to join the next MSS. Thank you very much for your attention. Back to you, Pascal. So um, thank you very much, Nassim. And um, you have know, also been really very nice in time. And I would like um, now to give the word uh, to um, Chris Welsh, the director of master programs and also the head of the space uh, a payloads laboratory. And uh, because I'm also monitoring uh, the, the, the chat, there are quite some questions, uh, um, Chris, about the accreditation maybe you can say one or two words about it and also about the payload lab thank you very much um, okay, thank you pascal well uh the, the president has answered the question about accreditation in in the chat okay. the space payloads lab i will touch on as, as i go through this uh, this presentation but right now i have to focus on the on the msc so uh, yes i'm chris welch the the program director of the msc in space studies or the mss as we call it uh, each year we uh, we create a different space coin uh, for the class and here you can see you know the five space coins we we've had for the classes of 2017 through to the current class of 2021 i think you can probably see the theme that's mercury venus earth the moon and mars so i think you can guess what the uh, theme will be for, for 2022 um so i'm going to give you an overview of the program a little bit about the educational philosophy our aims and our structure i'm also going to talk about our alumni and i'm briefly going to introduce what we will do uh, on the mss breakout panel which will happen uh, at the uh, the end of the presentations here on the right you can see students uh, in front of Strasbourg Cathedral uh, and uh, below that you can see uh, some of our students on a professional visit to uh, SES in Luxembourg. So about ISU, well key to all the programs at ISU, not just the Masters, is what we call the three I's, interdisciplinary, international, intercultural and, and that's a really a key difference between our programs and probably any other university. What do we mean when we say interdisciplinary? Well, you can see the disciplines on the right here. We have three eyes space, which is the interdisciplinary, international, intercultural stuff, the, the kind of personal attributes, the sort of soft skills. We have space engineering, space sciences, human performance in space, space applications, space management and business, space policy, economics of law, and space humanities. So sometimes people think, uh, because I'm a physicist turned engineer that, uh, and I work at ISU, that ISU is an engineering school. And I say, no, it's not an engineering school. So some people think it's a business school. I go, no, it's not a business school. It's not a law school. ISU is a space school. If it's to do with space, you know, we probably cover it you know, somewhere in our curriculum. 
So what about the MSS specifically then? Well, there are four aims for the MSS. The first two are here. The first one is to provide a three eyes master's course for highly motivated students from a wide range of educational, cultural and professional backgrounds. So, uh, you know, if you have a bachelor's degree, okay, yeah, a good bachelor's degree, then you're potentially eligible for the master's. We have people from all sorts of all sorts of different backgrounds. You don't have to be an engineer or a scientist, and that's a really key message. We have architects, we have lawyers, we have economists, and so on. Second aim is to deliver a high quality three eyes education in the space domain. Uh, in such a way as to allow the students on the masters to achieve their full potential uh, and become some of the alumni that you'll be uh, hearing about later. Then to maintain, promote and build productive links within the global space community to understand how it all interacts. You've seen the diverse range of, of ISU alumni there are. Um, and in particular, you've also seen this man here on the top right, although you might not recognize him in a t-shirt. Okay, uh, but uh, this is our former chancellor, uh, the Apollo astronaut uh, Buzz Aldrin when he was visiting a little while ago. Uh, and then we want to produce graduates capable of contributing effectively and holding responsible positions within the global space sector. And here you see a, a picture of five MSS alums that I happened to bump into at a meeting in Paris uh, two years ago. You know, they, they, they've all been students on the program in, uh, in recent years, and they will now have jobs and are working, which is why they were at that meeting. How does the program work? Well, Nassim mentioned that it's, uh, it's a one or two year program. Uh, most students have to take the first year and some students take the second year. And I, I will flag up that what we call year A, the first year is 75 European credits. Now a normal academic year is 60. So this has got 25% extra content. So it is an intensive year. And if you're going to sign up for it or thinking of it, you should know that. If all goes well, then uh, you will graduate. And here you see the, the class of MSS 29 graduating in the Space Pioneers Hall. And uh, for those who want to, and for those who get good enough grades, there's the possibility of doing the thesis year, another 45 credits. This can be on a variety of projects. It's, it's one particular project. What we see here is one of the Space Payload Laboratories uh, experiments that went to the International Space Station. Nassim mentioned this. Uh, this is uh, what we call Hydra One, and this is a, a plant growth experiment. It wouldn't normally be floating around like that. That was just during, uh, during the installation. We have a slightly unusual structure. We don't have um, uh, semesters, uh, but uh, we, we just have the academic year. So this shows you from left to right one academic year. Okay, we start off with one module until about November. Then we have three modules in parallel, and I'll talk about each of these in turn. Then we have electives, and then we have the mandatory internship, and that takes you through to, uh, to September. So, there are three types of module, okay? There are core modules, which are kind of lecture-based modules which deliver the academic content. They're very broad, they're very interdisciplinary. We have the practice modules, okay? Which are focused on applying the knowledge on doing things that you've learned. And then we have the elective modules, which are also taught modules, but they're much shorter and they're much uh, more focused. I'll say a little bit about each of these here. So the two core modules are that first one, Introduction to Space, and then followed by Interdisciplinary Space Studies. And these both have classes on all the different, uh, all the different topics, all the different uh, disciplines that we have within ISU. So you could be having a lecture on orbit mechanics, followed by a lecture on space law, followed by a lecture on space art. Uh, that's the, the, the nature of the program. Then we have, oh, sorry, then we have the, so going the wrong way there. Then we have the practice-based modules, the team projects, okay? Uh, here you see the, the two covers of last year's reports, one on the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and one on chip stats. These are interdisciplinary projects and that's very important to understand. And then this year you can see the two topics, Space Medical Center, how to care for humans in space and oceans in space this year uh, with a particular focus on the effects of plastic on the oceans. There's also an individual project uh, on a topic of your choosing or one proposed by the faculty. Uh, and then uh, an internship, 12 weeks is the minimum length of time. It can go to six months or in some cases longer, carried out in the, in the space sector. 
Uh, I will say typically uh, we would send people out around the world and you can see that on this slide, you know, recent internships, people in different parts of the world, uh, San Francisco, Paris, Beijing, London, Luxembourg, uh, Tohoku, you know, um, bottom right is, uh, is Ames in California and so on. Obviously with COVID over, over the last year, that's been more difficult. We've had to do a lot more remote internships, um, but, but this is the plan. Then there are the elective modules, uh, which are short, very focused modules. Um, these change each year, depending on the interests of the faculty and, uh, and what the, the students on the program think. So for example, last year's electives were interstellar studies, looking at world ships for traveling between the stars, very speculative. Space pharmaceuticals, because humans are going to need pharmaceuticals in space, astrobiology and uh, new space and entrepreneurship. So that's the big picture of the program. If you have any questions about that, there will be the MSS uh, breakout panel uh, after the presentations and you can join that and you can ask questions there. I'd now like to just spend a little bit of time talking about uh, alumni um, because I've got pictures of various alumni. Obviously the, 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 the famous one you've already heard, Jessica Mead, NASA astronaut. Um, you know, she, uh, she is our, you know, our, I guess our poster, poster person. Uh, as, a, as, a, as an alumni, but you've heard today from Elodie. Uh, you would have heard from Violetta, but unfortunately she got sick today. Uh, Chiara Manfletti, who now works at ESA. Chiara used to be uh, head of the, um, the Portuguese Space Agency until recently. Francis Chazia, the bottom left there, he's the head of the Nigerian Space Agency. If I go to bottom right, Michael Davis was, uh, was on the very first Masters ever and was, you know, took the knowledge he, he gained there back to Australia and has basically, you know, transformed the Australian, uh, you know, space sector uh, over the you know, intervening, you know, 25 years. Uh, and then three people in the middle, these are all space entrepreneurs, master students who co-founded Spire Global, one of the most successful uh, companies, uh, new space companies in the world, particularly in terms of the number of satellites launched. There are many others. I'm not going to talk about each one of them because there isn't time. So I'm just going to let you quickly look at these slides to get an idea of the range of, of people that, you know, Robbie Shingler, co-founder of Planet, um, head of Nikomsat uh, and so on. Um, here are some more, you know, you know, space technologists, space business people, space architects, you know, space doctors, uh, space engineers, uh, PhD students, uh, entrepreneurs, um, uh, all, all manner of, uh, you know, of, of different jobs that these people have, uh, have, have taken on. And there's more and there's more. Um, this is the very last slide I'm going to, going to make you look at there. Uh, I just have one more after this, which is to say, you know, at the MSS breakout session, okay, I will have three more recent uh, um, uh, MSS alumni. You can, you can see them here, including two from the very last year, Ilias and Juliana. And so I will be there and they will be there and we will collectively, uh, you know, answer your questions. Um, so that's it from me. Thank you very much for your attention and maybe see you in the MSS breakout session. Thank you very much, uh, Chris, um, uh, for this um, um, discussion and all the details on the master's program. So uh, we are going now to uh, Gokduk uh, Karachegliogo, but we call him also G2. This is easier. Uh, and he will um, actually discuss three programs. He will discuss the Space Studies program um, and uh, the Southern Hemisphere Space Program, but also the Interactive Space Program. Gokto, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pascal. Um, just cross-checking if you can hear me and you can see my presentation. All right, excellent. So greetings everyone from the ISU Concurrent Design Facility. Actually, I'm located at the moment at the central campus. And um, I'll, it's my pleasure uh, today uh, that uh, I will tell our audience about the uh, program that I am a graduate of as well, which is the SSP. So um, let's directly dive into it. So uh, Nassim and Chris both covered the three pillars of the ISU programs being international, uh, intercultural and interdisciplinary. 
so uh, I'll not uh, go more onto that. However, yes, the curriculum design of all our summer programs and all our online program is also built on the same 3i methodology. So if you wish, uh, let's talk about the ways our summer programs differs uh, from the MSS. So our uh, summer programs falls into the category of what we call the continuous education programs. So that is the focus is a little bit less into diving, you know, the academic side of it, but rather making sure that all the participants coming from all these different backgrounds will succeed to understand each other at the end of the nine week program, by which I mean an engineer uh, will have the knowledge to follow the discussions on space policy and law. A business person will uh, realize the you know, criticality of uh, space humanities. A lawyer will uh, understand how orbital mechanics work and or a journalist will have a holistic understanding of space science. Uh, second, the SSP and the SHSSP are uh, are live-in uh, programs, as we call them. The more uh, the, 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 the global the world becomes, it is very obvious uh, that the more important international collaboration is. However, although everybody talks about how important uh, collaboration is at pretty much every event nowadays, it is practically impossible to collaborate with someone who you don't you know, know or trust. Uh, this is why the majority of the professional connections build on interpersonal networks, which requires the two parties to know and respect each other's uh, values and culture and developing relationships at a personal level before taking any step uh, on the professional level. So for the SSP, we bring more than 120 participants from all over the world to, uh, to the host site of the program. And these people become part of a mission crew, if I call, uh, for the next nine weeks. They stay at the same residence, they eat at the same restaurant, they study together, they help each other to, to work for the exam. And we organize lots and lots of cultural activities for them, like team building workshops, design thinking exercises, professional and cultural tours, uh, and many more. So with that, every member gets to know the rest of the cohort on a personal level. And in addition, they have the chance to directly interact with more than 200 experts that are coming into the program who also stay with them at the same residence and who also joins the meals. So this is really where the main interactions happen. So once the program ends, each participant ends up with dozens of lifelong friends that they are as close as a phone call, if I may call. And of course, as the program ends, there are, we are seeing more and more of you know, uh, connections which spin off with many international startup companies all the way. And finally, the SSP is hosted in a different country every year. Uh, so it interacts with the local space community in a very substantial way where many experts uh, from local academic circles of the hosting company joins the ISU, for example, as an adjunct faculty. And the resources locally developed uh, for SSP still continue to foster the local space community and industry even after the program is over, which we already talked about the example of Australia. All right, so now that you know what are the major differences uh, of SSP compared to practically MSS. Let's have a quick look into the curriculum of the nine week. As you can now see on the slides, the duration of the program is divided into three more or less, I should say, equal portions, which we call the phases. So the very first phase is dedicated for the core lectures, related uh, workshops, and team building exercises. This is where we provide core disciplinary information uh, to the participants with the aim of making sure that everyone has a you know, threshold level of knowledge to continue the upcoming teamwork phases. Uh, we refer uh, the, the, the second uh, phase of the, or the second uh, three weeks of the program as the departmental phase, or we can call it the mini specialization phase. This is when the participants are given the opportunity to select one of the seven disciplines of ISU, which we already talked about, uh, and attend only the activities 
uh, for that department for this particular phase. So every department consists of 17 to 18 uh, participants. And there are no more lectures here, but rather uh, there are a lot of hands-on activities and professional visits. So during this phase, we have a lot of visits to you know, clean rooms, uh, to telescopes, to, to hospitals, uh, to satellite control centers, MOOC courts, incubation centers, uh, dark sky reserves, and are, these are the topical and typical also activities uh, during this phase. And the final phase of the program is possibly the most intense, but also the most fun part. Uh, this is where we divide the group into four and where every uh, 30 participants work in a separate team project, where then they do the research, they identify the gaps, write a report addressing the decision makers, and then present this report to the ISU Global Faculty. So as much as, much as it contains you know, the academic uh, portion of it, the team project phase is also an educational exercise in itself where the participants experience the dynamics and challenges of working within a 3 i uh, team uh, to deliver a report under time pressure. And after the program, we also provide our participants with some financial aid to present their findings and reports in uh, several locations, like conferences like IAC or meetings uh, like the UN uh, meetings. Last uh, but not least, we highly believe uh, that the the, 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 the learning doesn't only happen during the uh, lectures or workshops, but on a casual one-on-one -on -one chat can also open many doors. So with this view in mind, uh, we have recently started our mentorship program, which is now directly embedded in the curriculum of the SSP, SHSSP, and ISP programs. Uh, with this program, the participants are provided with 10 one-hour slots, uh, with any of the experts they can uh, share with who are part of our mentorship pool. The, the feedback we are receiving from our participants on this mentorship program so far has been really phenomenal. Uh, and they mentioned that this opportunity, one-on-one -on -one mentorship, has been the highlight of their program. So to sum it up uh, on the SSP front, when you look at the numbers of a generic uh, program, it quickly adds up to around 600 people which is an impressive number of like-minded, you know, space-oriented uh, people coming together at a different location uh, around the globe every year. So in the uh, upcoming slides, you see some of our SSP alumni who definitely we are very proud of, uh, and I will not definitely go one by one because the list is really, really long. So before moving forward, let me very quickly pause here for a moment and talk about the upcoming SSP program, which is SSP 21, because it will have a special structure compared to any previous SSP session. This is what I call an interconnected SSP. Um, as Nassim mentioned, the hosting institution for SSP 21 had been selected as the University of Granada, uh, Spain, for some years ago. However, due to the current sanitary restrictions, we decided not to create a too big, too crowded uh, cluster in one single location. In this context, we will be offering the SSB21 as a three location program. One group, as you see, in Granada, a second group at our campus centers here in Strasbourg, France, and a third group uh, virtually joining the program from their home. So, how do they interact? 70% of uh, the, the, the cur curriculum of each program will be standalone. Uh, that is, each group uh, will have their own activities designed exclusively for them, including workshops, departmental activities, and professional visits and the projects. And 30% of the curriculum of each program, on the other hand, will be interconnected. That is, uh, the participants of each group will then work together on different activities or projects uh, with the other two. Uh, so with this interconnected scheme, every participant will get the maximum interactivity within their small group of 40 people, uh, but also they will still have the chance to work with the entire SSP 21 cohort, which will be more than 100 people. 
So we are very excited about this project in particular, and we have a team of more than 50 academic and administrative members working on the design of this uh, since last September. I just need to mention that uh, due to the sanitary restrictions, we will only be able to allow a limit, limited number of participants, both in Strasbourg and Granada. So this is why I highly recommend uh, you to initiate your admissions process if you want to join one of these on-site locations. All right, so uh, now that we covered the SSP program in detail, let's have a, uh, take uh, just two, three minutes to talk about the SHSSP. Because the concept of SHSSP is indeed very similar to SSP, except the fact that there, uh, that, it, that it's offered, of course, for the, uh, at the Southern Hemisphere, uh, with a different uh, you know, uh, duration, five-week program, and during January and February. So to fit into this time frame, the mini specialization or the departmental section of the curriculum is no more there. And all the participants go through the exact same activities, uh, including the lectures, workshops, and the team projects. So at this point, you might be thinking uh, whether this program is offered specifically for the residents of the countries in the Southern Hemisphere, and the uh, answer is no. <laughs> uh, every year, we are seeing more and more people joining uh, to this program from Europe and from the Americas. Uh, so it's really about you and your preference and availability. So if your personal, let's say, schedule, for example, do not allow you to take a leave for nine weeks for the northern summer, or if your availability fits with January, to February timeframe better, or, or if you just want to, you know, study in Australia, uh, SHSSP is the program for you. So last but not least, I will very briefly touch on our brand new virtual program, uh, as mentioned as the interactive space program, the ISP, which has been specifically designed from scratch as a response to the you know, COVID-induced uh, travel restrictions. However, it is now a part of our permanent ISU annual program portfolio. As you see on the screen, the ISU ISP curriculum uh, has been designed to recreate the maximum level of interactivity and engagement for a virtual group of participants. So that is, this is not a MOOC-like course where you can you know, go and watch a series of pre-recorded lectures and take assignments at your own pace uh, and availability. This is, this is not ISP. Rather, uh, this is a fully synchronous uh, five-week full-time uh, program for an exclusive group of participants. So it's a limited number, around 40 participants, uh, where all the activities are conducted live uh, by the same ISU faculty who are teaching at SSP and SHSSP. And during ISP, uh, also the participants have the chance to meet uh, more experts and also the mentors, as mentioned in the previous programs. So uh, this brings me to to the end of my presentation. And I would like to thank you very much for your attention and interest. So for further questions, as you see in around, I think 20, 25 minutes, uh, I will be joined by uh, six of our wonderful alumni, uh, whom you see on the screen for getting your detailed questions on SSP, SHSSP and ISP in the breakout room. So. I'm very much looking forward to meeting you in one of our programs. So until then, please stay safe and healthy. With that, I'm handing back to you, Pascal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Koktuk. Um, it was a very lively presentation. And uh, the last uh, module here now uh, will discuss and introduce the executive space courses to you. And uh, this uh, will be done by uh, the ISU president, Juan de Dalmau, and also Geraldine Moser. Please go ahead. Thank you. Well, welcome to ISU uh, Short Space Courses session. I have the pleasure to co-lead this session with ISU's president, Mr. Juan de Dalmo. My name is Geraldine Moser. I am the program manager for ISU Short Courses and the proud alumna of the Executive Space Course 2008. And I will now give the floor straight away to president the Dalmo. 
Thank you, Geraldine. Thank you very much. I hope uh, you can hear me. Yes, we can. And um, we want to walk you through uh, the main uh, aspects of the executive space courses and other short courses. So we will uh, uh, talk uh, about um, who are they for. Uh, we'll give a few examples of uh, people who have been attending these programs and what they do today, what they have learned. Uh, we will give an example of uh, uh, the contents and what is really in the schedule. Uh, we will uh, present to you uh, who is teaching at these courses. And uh, we will describe a few surprises that sometimes happen during these courses. And then we will conclude with uh, the things that can happen after you attend an ESC. So be prepared for uh, some surprises. Mm -hmm. First of all, who are they for? Basically for two uh, types of uh, professionals, those who may already be in the space sector, but who are interested into uh, enlarging their background with uh, other fields, for example, finance or law, uh, marketing, um, and uh, also for professionals who are uh, outside of the space sector, but who want to develop an understanding and uh, really uh, make a career switch into the space sector. And these can be entrepreneurs, they can be employees from governments, uh, politicians, uh, diplomats, people in the world of finance, uh, journalists, uh, you name it. It's really uh, open to any professional, like all other ISU offerings. And uh, some examples of uh, notorious uh, persons who have attended the executive space course, uh, they are here in no particular order, except for the first three. Uh, they are special because Katrina, Hervé and Sudhir uh, will uh, join us later during the breakout session and will be able to uh, explain their own experience, uh, what they're doing today, what they got from the program, and they will answer your questions. In fact, uh, Katrina, who is number one on the list, and Satoru Kurosu-san, who is the last one on the list from Japan, they have one thing in common. They uh, discovered the ISU through the executive space course and decided that space was really for them and then continued on to other ISU programs. So that is also possible. On the uh, picture uh, on the right hand side, uh, you see Ms. Kendra Horn, who is a Congresswoman. She has been chairing uh, for some time now already the uh, Space uh, Subcommittee uh, in the uh, US uh, Congress. So you can see a top politician who uh, has attended the uh, executive space course and you see other uh, people in industry, in uh, government, uh, entrepreneurs and um, a variety of people. You can imagine what happens when uh, some of these people are spending one week together and the type of conversations and the professional network that uh, they benefit from uh, already during the course. So what do these people learn? Uh, I think um, we have already uh, been able to imagine it by now, uh, having listened to the other presenters. Uh, so the executive space course is uh, in a shorter version, also uh, an interdisciplinary introduction into space technology, science, uh, business, uh, law and regulations, uh, policies is an important part in a very international uh, setting. And of course, for those who uh, bring uh, other backgrounds than engineering or science, they do get uh, these concepts, uh, these technical concepts explained in a, an understandable language so that they get familiar with the terminology of uh, the space uh, community. Uh, so if you would need to summarize in only two points what it is that people get at the end of the course. It's basically two things. It's an introduction into the knowledge of the different disciplines and the linkages between them. That's very important. 
And secondly, a professional engagement that will help uh, people throughout their career, if they wish, to advance uh, their professional goals. A typical schedule is uh, four and a half days from a Monday to Friday noon. And you see here the different disciplines, how they are presented. There are uh, sessions that are more interactive. Someone was asking on the chat, how can you have an interactive workshop if you're online? Well, we do this and that's the whole secret. Um, Director Goktu is one of the experts in uh, online and interactive uh, teaching and learning. So uh, that is possible and it is happening. And who is teaching the courses? Well, you heard earlier from uh, previous speakers, including our Chancellor Pascal Ehrenfreund, that there are 150 experts who are members of the ISU global faculty. What we mean by global is uh, people who have their own jobs in government, industry, or academia, but who uh, have been with us for sufficient uh, time to be able to uh, come regularly and teach at our programs. So we draw on uh, this uh, valuable uh, pool of experts, but some of them are teaching more often. And here you see uh, different discipline leads who uh, have been teaching more regularly in the executive space courses. Uh, let me mention at the bottom left uh, corner, Professor Walter Peters, who is a lead faculty uh, and who was uh, in the pioneering team uh, more than 10 years ago uh, with the very beginning of the executive space courses. Professor Peters will be a part of the uh, breakout uh, sessions later and will also uh, help us with uh, answering uh, all of your questions. Here come a couple of surprises that may happen and that we don't always announce uh, before the start of the course. Uh, you may meet with an astronaut. In this case, um, our very own uh, Soyeon Yi, the first uh, astronaut from South Korea and the only one so far who uh, you will have uh, imagined it by now, happens to be an ISU alumna as well. She appeared during a recent executive space course in, uh, in uh, Seattle. Uh, other um, surprises you could say that very much depend on the location of the course are uh, the professional visits. Uh, in this case, uh, the Museum of uh, Space Flight in uh, Seattle, uh, Washington State is a regular host for our courses in uh, North America. Other surprises, you may meet a minister and here, um, Dr. Manuel Eitor in the middle of the picture is uh, hosting a special reception during the executive space course uh, last September in Lisbon, Portugal. You can see this photo has been taken uh, during the pandemics, just by judging by the distance uh, between the people on it. And here I would like to hand over to uh, Geraldine, the program manager of the short courses, to walk us uh, through what's going to happen uh, in the near future, uh, Geraldine. Thank you, thank you very much, Juan. So um, as you can see on this uh, world map, the first ESC was launched in Strasbourg at ISU Central Campus 18 years ago, as already mentioned uh, by my colleague Nassim. And this following a need from a satellite operator to provide its employees with a broader and interdisciplinary space training. This need for space capacity um, building was felt not just in Europe, but also in the US and Australia. And each course, including a core curriculum and a specific regional focus. So entrepreneurship and small satellites for Seattle, for example. So more than 500 participants have benefited from this course so far. The upcoming uh, short courses include a three-day course focusing on space resources. ISU has partnered with the Colorado Sp School of Mine and the Luxembourg Space Agency to deliver this course. So this course will take place in April, as you can see here, from the 15th to the 17th of April 2021. And then will be uh, the original 
um, executive space course taking place hopefully in Strasbourg in a hybrid mode. What does a hybrid mode mean? This means that the participants will be able, if the situation allows it, to come on site ISU. And there will also be some participants who will take part remotely. So this course will take place on the 19th till the 23rd of April. And then will be the next course in the Asia Pacific region in May. And after that, in Tel Aviv, Israel, towards the end of May. Hopefully also in a hybrid version. Um, the courses that will potentially also still happen in Turkey, May and June, the USA. Uh, as we can see, the first course in uh, Seattle started in 2016. So we've already had uh, several versions uh, taking place. And hopefully a new offering also in Ireland and uh, Dubai. Next slide, please. Thank you. I would like to reiterate the um, experience, the tremendous experience that ISU gained in offering and delivering um, courses online. This was already mentioned by uh, my colleague uh, Gokto Caraglio with regards to uh, the interactive space program, the ISP20. The, the curriculum includes workshops specifically designed for the ESC. So ESC online. So we have partnered with a company called Valley Space and they actually uh, have together with ISU, with uh, Professor Teje Moulin, we have developed a workshop which is specifically designed for online ESC courses. The networking aspect is very important for ISU. It will always, ISU will always ensure that programs include times and moments for the participants to exchange among themselves, but also with the lecturers. Next slide, please. My apologies, you, the, uh, the screenshots you just saw were actually from a, a course, we, a tailored course we organized for, for you, Metsat. So you can see the whole class. Uh, on the left, and the lecturers, Professor Chris Welch and uh, Professor Walter Peters, who were lecturing obviously online. Thank you. So what happens after the ESC is the important part. So you will keep learning, you will have access to the library, and hopefully the ESC will have given you a feel for ISU and um, encourage you to take another course at ISU. Um, you will, in um, the breakout session, I will be joined by three alumni and uh, two of them, especially one of them, has uh, taken another course following the ESC. So this is really a kind of stepping stone also uh, and a teaser maybe for other courses. And keep networking. Networking is, as I was saying, very important and you will be able to join the 5,000 um, rich alumni uh, network. So with that, onto the next slide, please. So some uh, practical information. The class size is strictly limited in order to maximize the interaction between the participants and also with the lecturers and guest experts. So, Registration is done online. It's very quick and non-binding. You can see the, the website uh, on the slide here. I would like to mention that uh, participants to the ESC get a certificate, which if the course is online, we will show it online and we will then of course send the hard copy over to, uh, over to you. With regards to the fees, uh, here is an example of some fees for the executive space course, uh, which takes place uh, in a hybrid mode in Strasbourg. I would like to mention at this point that ISU has scholarships, as my colleague Nassim was mentioning, for the SSP, the MSS, the SHSSP, and CSP only. Next slide, please. Okay, what participants say about ESC? 
you can see uh, on this slide some um, posts that were taken from social media. Uh, I let you I let you read them. Some very enthusiastic um, uh, comments, obviously from uh, from the participants. Uh, I'd like to read out uh, the one from Jeremy Hornung, which reads: "The ESC is the only executive course on Earth for anyone interested in space-related topics. An intense one-week boot camp to better understand the industry, mature ideas, and get inspired for the decades to come." So. Um, and there are there are several more like that that you can uh, you can find if you put hashtag ESC, for example, on uh, on internet, you will see uh, several um, comments and uh, get some feedback on this course or two through this way. Next slide, please. So you will find here my contact details. Uh, I'm available via email, but also you can phone me. Very often it's good to have a, a first contact via uh, just over the phone to be able to, to talk about um, um, your, your experience, what you expect, if this course is the right one for you. And um, you will also be able to stay in and join me in the breakout room together with uh, Rolando Dalmo and also uh, Professor Walter Peters and, and three ESC alumni, including uh, Katrina Melograna, Hervé Krieger and uh, Sudhir Pai. So I, with that, I thank you and pass the floor back to uh, Juan, if you would like to add anything at all. Oh, I think the floor is uh, all Pascal's. Thank you, Brilliant. Geraldine. Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank you. And actually, I would like to thank all the speakers um, of today and also the people that are actually working in the background to make mm -hmm. such a virtual, uh, virtual event really possible and working very well. So we don't see them, but they are really there. And as you know, in all those digital platforms. So I really want to uh, a great thank you to them as well. There will be a closing session hosted uh, by the ISU president, Juan de Dalmau, uh, a bit later. And I want to say goodbye. I hope you had a great time and I hope you still have a great time in the breakout sessions. And uh, now I give uh, the floor to Bertrand Goldman. He will explain you how to get uh, to the breakout rooms. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Pascal. And thank you, Nassim, Juan, and all the uh, program directors for all the information that you provided. So now is the time indeed to move uh, to the breakout rooms. Uh, so there you can talk with alumni and the program directors. Uh, you will talk with Nassim Bovet uh, and uh, a couple of alumni uh, in the alumni and application room. And also we have four entrepreneurs, uh, ISU alumni, of course, uh, in the breakout room uh, entrepreneurship. And also they will be joined by Yannick Nafu, uh, Lafu, who is the head of the uh, ISU incubator. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you will be able to uh, ask your question, maybe type them in the chat in the chat and then the, the, the chair of the panels will uh, pick up your, your questions and read it or maybe give you the microphone depending on the size of the of the room you can go from one chat room to uh, to the next uh, sorry one breakout room to to the next uh, you can navigate and go back to the main room and, and then move on to a, another breakout room and to do that you just have to click on the breakout room uh, button it's uh, uh, at the bottom right of your screen between uh, uh, recording and uh, reactions. Uh, so you've got this, this uh, square breakout rooms. You just click there and uh, you can pick up uh, the room that you want as soon as this is set up. Uh, so uh, uh, IT experts, Tommaso, is setting up the rooms right now. Okay, so here you've got uh, the description of the different rooms. So we have five rooms and now you can go uh, to the rooms. So just click on this little square and you can go there. And I see you have started to do that. So uh, please pick up the room that you would like to, to visit. If you have any questions, also technical questions, uh, ask in the chat. And in this main room, we will just uh, show some, some images uh, and music, but uh, 
all the actions will take place in the breakout rooms. Okay, so you, if you don't have a button for breakout room, uh, my best uh, explanation for that is that you don't have the right version of Zoom. Uh, so you will need to have a recent Zoom. Uh, I've got 5.4.9. Uh, if you don't see the breakout room button, I believe that you need to, uh, you know, reinstall Zoom and, uh, and join again, which you can do. I mean, it just will take you a few, a few minutes. So please do that, yeah, exactly. Uh, Thomas has posted the, the link to download Zoom again. So just do that. In a few minutes, you will be able to, to join us. <laughs> 